Hi, this is Shashwat Kaur. I'm head for data and analytics uh, within Philips GBS. Um, within Philips GBS analytics teams, there are various uh, functional analytics and AI teams. One of them is supply chain analytics. Today, I will be talking about uh, how we use AI and analytics to really transform uh, our supply chain processes and also some of the other organizations, how they are transforming and revolutionizing uh, their processes as well. Uh, I will try to take one use case uh, so that uh, I can talk about uh, how ex exactly it gets used and how it is uh, bringing in a lot of efficiencies uh, to every organization at this point in time. I'll, I'll move to the next slide. Uh, so what you see here is really, uh, and I'm using a pointer, is really a process uh, that is followed by every organization when they do supply chain. One of the first parts is really when a salesperson creates a, a generates a lead, right? And then the salesperson also works with, uh, you know, internal organizations to come up with a code, for example, for that particular, uh, you know, whatever product they are selling. And then uh, goes, I mean, I, this is really the process of order management. And the second, next part is really uh, how do we validate the customer information and then a little bit of packing uh, stuff and getting all the right, uh, you know, right vendors, right units or right subunits that need to be prepared, etc. More of planning. And then it comes to fulfillment, which basically uh, stands for uh, how do we ensure that for a particular uh, product, what are the different uh, you know items that are needed to be assembled? Some items need to be sourced from third party, etc. And then finally, it goes for production. You know, for those where large machines are there or any other uh, item uh, that needs to be produced then it goes for delivery uh, to the customers and then the invoicing happens so these are some of the very high level process uh, you know process steps that are there in supply chain uh, any generic supply chain for an organization now what happens in a lot of traditional organization is really each of these steps are you know discussed over phone discussed manually uh, and really people don't know where which step of the process a particular order is and the next step actually or the next folks who are uh, really with one of the other steps will get to know about the previous step by talking with them over phone or whatever that is and then if there is a problem in this chain of uh, activity there will be reactive approach to it and uh, for example if there's a problem with delivery there will be uh, no knowledge of where it went wrong whether it was at the fulfillment stage whether it was at the customer validation stage so on and so forth so typically what companies do is a lot of manual tracking now where it actually it failed it will be not known and finally what happens is um, you know very even if it is a very smooth and very efficient uh, supply chain process there are uh, you know there might be some red metrics Given all the supply chain issues that we see nowadays with uh, some of the challenges that are there with some of the geographies uh, due to the lockdown and all that that happened. Uh, globally, of course, there are certain countries where um, supply chain is very much uh, leaning upon for any organization which are dealing with big products and hence um, there's a bottleneck that that is happening with with some of those countries but the bottleneck can be anywhere it is not necessary that it is due to the covid lockdown it can be for any other reason in this chain that is there ultimately what happens is uh, the customers uh, become a little unhappy uh, seeing uh, where they stand and if they don't get fulfilled if they have long waiting time no customer will be happy in today's date when usually a consumer gets things in a matter of days so what is that's fine there's a process etc what does ai and analytics have to do with it ai and analytics have to do a lot about what we have and that is what i'm going to discuss in the next slide 
So what you see here is again um, all these different steps that you see uh, is really uh, the way it is working nowadays is there is of course sensors available right you know internet of things and when uh, at every step we call something called digital twin uh, which is nothing but whether an entry is made or whether a customer is getting validated all of it is done digitally right in some digital tune a uh, twin uh, and and um, so what happens is when there is a lead getting generated it will get entered to a particular tool and i will refrain from using the names of tools because there are many tools in that space some of them are really advanced uh, and then a quotation gets generated all these things are done via digital medium which means that there's enough traceability and there's a single source of truth so my advice to organizations will be to limit the number of tools that they have and then they can do you know changes over time but they should have one or two tools and there should always be a single source of truth for that and what happens is if we know at every step where a particular uh, you know product is whether it is at a packaging stage whether it is at a production stage uh, we really need to uh, it is very important to keep that traceability right if the traceability is there then what happens i will know in an average for a particular product type going to a particular country or a market there will be an average time that is taken for that product to be fulfilled towards a customer and we can always look at here we have how many you know six seven steps right seven steps now in the seventh step there is an average uh, time taken from step 1 to step 2 to step 2 to step 3 to step 3 to step 4 right so if we know what is the average time taken for a particular category to a particular country you know those are the basic information that is important at that level we will be able to always predict how much time it will take from one step to another step and if we know how much time it will take we can always model it right at at the invoicing stage how much time approximately it will take to take all the seven steps and hence you know this is the approximate time 30 day 40 day 50 day whatever that is right and then what can happen is if there is a deviation of uh, actual time taken for a particular step to happen from what the norm is then there's a alarm or a trigger or a signal that goes off to the end point which is with the um, delivery uh, organization which will say hey which can proactively actually go to the customer and say and renegotiate on the deadlines and the customer will be okay uh, given that they are getting sufficient notice for change in the customer delivery time and over time what happens with ai there is a uh, expectations setting that happens which basically means if earlier the average was 30 day and we consistently see that the average goes to 40 day then uh, next time when a delivery agent is uh, going and letting the customer know they will always ask for 40 day and not 30 day which means that we become better we become more efficient in even planning in even predicting where which shipment is stuck or where which um, item or product uh, is still uh, waiting or which vendor is taking longer time so analytics on all of these parameters are created so that um, so that it can be used intelligently ultimately all this will result into uh, a metric which is becoming better from red to amber to green probably uh, and the metrics are really always getting um, improved upon by algorithms as we get to know the process better as more recent information comes my data set will always get updated with what is the most recent average vis-a-vis -vis what it was six months back um, so all this will result into happy customer now it is easier said than done because all this will require a lot of infrastructure will require a lot of analytics to be done by good analysts but the result will speak for itself when this happens uh, as i said with, with better metrics 
or with better you know which will also result into customer satisfaction so this is how really analytics is revolutionizing uh, the entire uh, ecosystem for supply chain summarizing digital twin of the entire process single source of truth is important based on that based on averages you know, whether you use median or mean depending on you know what is the right uh, central tendency you can always do predictive analytics on how much time it takes from step 1 to step 2 to step 2 to step 3 as well as depending on which market the sale is being done or which product are we talking about there will obviously be differences between a large product and a small product as well as to which country it is getting uh, you know delivered to or which state this is getting delivered to there will be proactive alerts which uh, needs to uh, be created at every step not only by average time but there can be other proactive alerts as well you know if something is not reaching to the customer validation desk on time if something is not getting um, if some vendor is not able to fulfill uh, some of the sub items they had promised all these risk factors can be seen at the point of delivery they can always let uh, the customers know of if there are issues or challenges in terms of where how to fulfill and when to fulfill so this was really what i wanted to share with all of you uh, today um, the benefits as i said are happy customers great metrics uh, and finally what will happen is it will become much more efficient right you know if i i can only improve what i can measure right and measurement is super important for us to improve from whatever the average was typically companies get uh, uh, you know 2 3 x um, efficiencies when they implement uh, data technologies in their supply chain this is all i had to share today uh, thank you for listening in and uh, happy usage of data and analytics in your supply chain processes trust me this will transform your processes the only thing is ensure that you are using it uh, for driving business benefits that is the most important part for driving results uh, the data infrastructure the analytics they are all means to get to the result uh, what is most important is uh, driving those, those results with a business mindset uh, and IT actually plays more of an enabler role here. Thank you so much for listening to me.